Hello, we're in Moscow, Russia, and I'm here with the CSK Condition Coach and the owner of Performance 22 and Playmax Pro, Kostas Hatsakristas, and we're gonna talk a little bit uh, about most interesting things for the condition coaches probably all over the world. What are the biggest challenges for the coach during the pre-season training program? Pre-season always poses a big challenge for the, for the coaches, uh, especially for the strength and conditioning coach, because there's uh, simply too much too many things to do. There's a big volume of work that needs to be scheduled in a short period of time. So you got uh, the offensive and defensive strategy of the team that need, coach needs to work on. Um, you you got to work all, all those different aspects of tactics. And then the strength coach needs to worry about conditioning, uh, general and specific conditioning, needs, needs to worry about strength development, needs to worry about uh, speed, agility. There's just so many things that go into it. And normally, if you're lucky, you get about six to eight weeks of, uh, of time to develop all these things. And uh, that's, uh, there's simply not, not enough time. So uh, I always say that the most crucial part of, of, of preseason is actually the off season. What, uh, what you do in the summer will determine how good you're going to be during the preseason. So that's why I call the off season early preseason. So there's several challenges during the, the design of the program. Uh, most important thing is that uh, many times you get uh, uh, new athletes every season. So you get 50% or 60% of your team are just new people. Uh, you don't know, you, you need to figure out their, their injury profile, their needs, and just create three or four subgroups within the same group. Although it's, it's a team setting, and although you're dealing with the whole team, the program should be individualized. So every person has different needs, not everybody is the same. So you need to, to really establish everybody's needs and starting points and design the program accordingly. Uh, injury profile is super important. You need to, to uh, obviously uh, get a very, very careful uh, history of their, of, their, of their injuries and also factor that in, in terms of, uh, of, of program design. So um, during preseason, there's so many things that you have to work. Let's, you know, for example, specific conditioning, general conditioning, speed, agility, all those things. For me, the two, there are two priorities. And the, the first priority is to make sure that these people are able to do what you're asking them to do. So make sure that the neuromuscular system is prepared and ready to uh, sustain all this load that you're gonna throw at them, you and the coach. And that's, that's also a big uh, issue because there's, there's actually two philosophies or two, uh, let's say, coaches acting on one athlete. It's, uh, it's you as a strength coach and there's the head coach. So the head coach wants to do what he, he's planned and he's, he's just gonna go ahead and do it, but that also poses a load on the guy. So if he wants to work on defense and in the morning you're planning on working sprints, then the same load is gonna be imposed on the same person. So you, you really have to be careful about that. Um, so going back to, the, to that first point, the most important thing during preseason is to establish that all you guys all, or girls are ready to uh, sustain the load. So biggest mistake I see coaches do is they just uh, in, uh, assume that their, their players are ready and they just start working. So uh, the, the worst thing that can happen in preseason is to have somebody getting hurt. That's, how, that's why you have to make sure that the neuromuscular system is ready to sustain that load. Now, if you figure, if if you do your evaluation, if you if you think that the athlete is not ready because either he's uh, he, he had some previous injuries and he didn't work, or he just came unprepared, then you need to back you need to back off. You need to back down. And uh, very often we see coaches have, coming in in the preseason and have a preconceived idea about what they should be doing. But really, what's going to lead you to design your program is the needs of your athlete. So if you see an athlete that is unprepared, then you need to go slow, even if you don't have enough time. And that's always a struggle between the strength coach and the head coach, because the head coach, especially here in Europe, you, you need the player to be ready on game one. So maybe you got six weeks to work on all these aspects, and then you know if the guy comes or the girl or the, your athlete comes unprepared, there's simply not enough time. So you need to take the right steps because if you push them. If you, if you increase the load and the intensity, then it's almost certain that, that they're going to get hurt. So, uh, number one priority is prepare the neuromuscular system with all, with all the work in the weight room. That's where strength becomes super important. So strength is one part, and then you start working on your conditioning. So speed, agility, plyometrics, all these other great and, and, uh, and trendy things that, are, that should be worked, uh, from, in my opinion, it's, it's very hard to, to, to factor them in into your preseason program. This is mostly work that is going to be done in the off season. You got you know one to three months, depending on each athlete's schedule, uh, to, to work on agility, to work on a, on, a, on speed development and heavy training and all that. Uh, during preseason, the load is just too much. So you got to focus on your strength. You got to focus on your on your conditioning work. 
So these are all things that uh, speed, agility, uh, you know, plyometric work, all this heavy lifting work should be done in the off season. In the pre-season, you should focus on your strength development, on your injury prevention. If I hate that work, but but let's call it that. And, and, and your conditioning. And after the off season is, is finished, then there's more, more space and, and you got five to six to eight months to develop your athletes. And that's another thing that I want to stress out that, that conditioning and, and actually, let me, let, let me rephrase it. So athlete development never stops. So even if we name a, a certain period, the preseason, we're actually thinking about athletic development throughout the year. So when this, this intensive season, this, this, uh, this period of time that you got too much work ends and you get, start going to your in-season, then still every week you can keep developing your athletes and designing your programs. And depending on of, of each athlete's role in the team, let's say somebody doesn't play a lot of minutes, then you can work on their athletic development and do your agility, do your jumps, do all the other things that you need to do. But that's also a major point that preseason, off-season, are just parts of the, of, the, of the annual circle. And athletic development happens throughout the year and it happens through many years. It takes a lot of years to fully develop an athlete. How do you treat uh, in a straight programming like your athletes with the games keep on going, with the, so many games during the season? How do you manage that? In-season program design is a big, also a big challenge for the strength coach. And you know, it, it all depends on, your, on the team's schedule. Let's say here at TSK or in, the higher, in a higher level, you get two or three games per week, you get a lot of travel. Uh, so your design is going to be uh, a lot different than a, than a team uh, that plays one game a week, maybe two games a week, which is most coaches' reality. Uh, they play one or two games per week, so there's more time to, fact, to, to, to program strength training sessions. So in our world, let's say if you play many games and you have a lot of, uh, a lot of obligations, Usually what we do is uh, we have one strong lifting day, as I call it, one heavy day where we work on, on strength development and power, and one lighter day that uh, we just make sure to maintain what we gained the previous, uh, the previous time. And obviously the load is lower because uh, you know, the guys are tired from play and, and travel. Uh, now, in a situation like that, you always have different subgroups within the team. So you get the people that don't play a lot, and for these people, you can, you can program and, and design the, the, the strength training session a little bit different, so you can increase the load, you can work on different things. So there should obviously be a different design according to each uh, you know, training phase that you're in. And uh, we already talked about the pre-season, which lasts about six to eight weeks. But then you get the in-season, which starts, let's say, in the beginning of October, it can go through May. And obviously you need to, to vary all your training variables, uh, your intensity, your volume, the frequency, even this exercise selection. So your training should always be challenging to the athlete. So one big difference between sports that uh, you know have one competition or two, three competitions per year and basketball where you have to compete every week is that you always have to adjust your training variables according to the state of your athlete at that week. And that, that is huge to understand that you cannot just design a beautiful uh, you know, weight chart and your periodization plan and make it work like design it in, in, in October and make it work all the way through May. You always have to evaluate, you always have to see what kind of condition are, uh, are your, your athletes in and adjust your training variables. So uh, at the end of the season where uh, there's, there's so many months uh, accumulated um, on the athlete, let's say that most athletes carry minor or major injuries and they're just tired, uh, then you have to really um, uh, adjust the load accordingly. The most important thing is to keep your workout short. Uh, you, uh, the way we do it is we use uh, full body multi-joint exercises. We get two or three of them. Um, the load is, is moderate to heavy, so the volume is small and the intensity is high, so you can still work on strength development and power, but we don't get our athletes too tired. It's, it's kind of in and out. We have you know 30 to 40 minute sessions, and then uh, we let them go, and I think this is a this is a good strategy. Uh, generally, keeping the the intensity high and then reducing the the volume, and then kind of manipulate the variables like that. Also, one very important uh, one very important point is you always have to evaluate the state of the athlete at that day, because let's say you have a, a game on Sunday and your athletes come in on Tuesday to lift, and then you uh, you have to 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 think about how many minutes that athlete played. Did he sustain a man, minor injury? How does he feel that day? And, and that will, should determine your exercise uh, selection and your, and your load. Not, not, you, it, maybe it will change that 100%. That's why I always say I design my weekly programs the day before. And I, and I know that it kind of sounds counterintuitive and it, it's not 
uh, let's say what would, a lot of coaches would like to think that everything is draw, pre-drawn and you know with all these charts and loading parameters but really you have to evaluate your, your athlete daily and adjust the load accordingly. What is the process uh, when you're designing the straight training program? Well, so there's so many things that go into program design, but I think the most important idea is to, to understand that first you need to consider who do you have in front of you? What are the needs of this person that you want to train, this athlete that you want to train? Uh, where, what is the goal? Where do you want this person to go? And then what are the physiological adaptation of these methods that you're trying to use? So you need to mass all these three things. And, and many times, like I said, uh, when we talked about preseason, we come in with a preconceived notion of what to do with the athletes. Okay, you're gonna do CrossFit, you're gonna do Pilates, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do you know, strength training. But we need to take time to consider who that person is. What is their, their age? What is their uh, injury profile? Uh, what is their, their training age? How long have they been training? And what is, what is the best fit for them? And then you need to, to understand what, where do you need this person to go? If you need them to be stronger, they need to lift. If, if you need them to have to be more flexible, you need to combine a lot of techniques. And then obviously you need to know what these techniques do. Because many times we just go on YouTube and then there's a huge you know, conversation about this YouTube era and the difference between knowledge and information. YouTube is full of information, but you know, we need to, to actually have the knowledge to use this information. Exactly. And people just trying to do the next cool thing that LeBron James did or this cool trainer said. And, but we definitely need to go back to the basics, go back to the physiology, understand the methods, understand what this, this person wants to go, figure out what this person needs, and then combine all that. I know it's kind of generic, but this is the key for successful program design.